Wow, I really, really need a haircut. Hey, what is up guys, Harry Ranson here, and today I want to discuss how to implement and execute a reverse diet, as well as a case study of one of my clients perfectly executing a reverse diet. But first of all, we need to determine what is a reverse diet. And a reverse diet can kind of be thought as the diet after the diet. And you're probably thinking, Harry, I've just dieted for 12, 16, 20 weeks. I don't want to continue dieting. And you kind of do and kind of don't, okay? You're not dieting in the sense that you're going to be in a calorie deficit, but you are dieting in the sense that you want to be able to maintain the weight that you got to and maintain the condition that you got to, to a point. So traditionally what a lot of people will do is obviously they'll diet down and then they will just rebound and put it all back on. And this may be due to a lack of experience, a lack of education, or potentially because they haven't set up what they're doing after the diet. And that's kind of where a reverse diet comes in. Now, the first mistake that most people do is they actually treat it like a diet in reverse. And I know that sounds like the same thing, but it's not, and let me explain. So when you finish a diet, you obviously want to get somewhere up to maintenance calories and get to a point where your body is no longer in a calorie deficit. And it was very, very popular a couple of years ago to do this whole reverse diet thing. And you'd see a lot of stories about these coaches and mainly competitors where they would be on this reverse diet on extra calories, extra carbs, and they'd be losing weight. And everyone was like, wow, this coach is magic. But effectively, all they were doing is just extending the diet even more. Sure, they were eating more food than they were before, but they're still in a deficit. So the whole idea of a reverse diet is to get out of that deficit as quickly as possible. So let's take a traditional dieting phase where you will start off on a calorie amount in a calorie deficit. You may hit a stall and then reduce by maybe 50 to 100 calories or increase expenditure slightly to break through that plateau. Now, the biggest mistake most people make is they start to do the same in reverse. So they'll be at their lowest point of calories and then they'll start to increase it by 50 to 100 calories per week. But that is still going to be such a large deficit. You're probably going to be in anywhere from a three, four to 500 calorie deficit. You need to get out of that as quickly as possible. So my first tip would be to get yourself out of that deficit as quickly as possible, which may mean adding three, four, 500 calories straight off the bat. The second mistake people make is that they think their old maintenance is going to be the same as their new maintenance. And I'm going to explain why this isn't going to be the case. So let's say you started off at 180 pounds, you had a successful diet, you lost 20 pounds and got to 160 pounds. The calories you need in 160 pounds is going to be a lot less than the 180 pounds previously. And that's simply because you have less body mass to move around. So when you do any sort of daily activity, you're gonna be burning less calories. So let's give you an example. Imagine you had a 300 pound person climbing 50 flights of stairs and you had a 120 pound person climbing 50 flights of stairs. Who's gonna be burning more calories? Obviously that 300 pound person because they have more mass to move around. Therefore, they're gonna be burning more calories. But the same applies even when you just have small amounts of weight change. So the calories that you maintained on when you're 180 pounds is not gonna be the same as when you're 160 pounds. So a mistake a lot of people make is that they will end the diet, then they will go back to the calories that they maintained on before. But you need to bear in mind that these need to be a lot lower. So there's no set amount. You may be able to calculate it, but this is where the whole reverse diet comes in. You need to start to find your new maintenance. So this is exactly how I implemented it with one of my clients, Fiona. So first of all, before I get started, I wanna say props to Fiona. She allowed me to put this in the video and she has been an absolutely fantastic client. So first of all, well done, Fiona. But on to Fiona's results. So Fiona started with me in March and she wanted to lose a bit of fat. So she came to me around about 144 pounds. And over the course of four months, we managed to get down to 120 pounds as her lowest weight. So that's a good 24 pounds lost in just four months. So fantastic results. And the game plan from here was to increase her calories to a point where she was feeling good, she was feeling strong in the gym and she wasn't getting hungry again. And I said to Fiona, we're gonna start to increase your calories and ideally, we don't want to be going above 125 pounds. And you may be thinking, why do you want to put on five pounds? And the reason why I suggested that number is because you just don't know what your body is gonna do when you start increasing calories. And when you're increasing things like glycogen, you increase the amount of water storage. So I wanted to, first of all, let Fiona know that she probably is gonna put on a little bit of weight when we start to increase calories because of the extra food volume, because of the extra carbohydrates. But when you look back at where she came from, 144 pounds, even at 125 pounds, that's still a net loss of around about 20 pounds. So that is still amazing, amazing progress. So to give you an idea, we started Fiona 
on six days of 1600 calories and one day of 1900 calories. And as the course of the diet went on, we made small adjustments and small changes where both of those days came down by around about 200 calories. Not all at once, but as we started to hit plateaus, we were kind of chipping away at calories and an increase in her cardio expenditure. So she ended up on around 1400 calories on six days a week and 1700 calories one day a week. Now, we set a date, we decided on a date that we wanted to move into the reverse diet. Rather than just adding 50 to 100 calories like we did during her dieting phase, I instantly added 350 calories. So I instantly added 65 grams of carbs and 10 grams of fat and cut her cardio in half. So we reduced her energy expenditure and increased her calories up to around about 1750. And the whole idea behind this is that we were trying to get her out of that calorie deficit as quickly as possible. At around 1700 calories a day, still with that refeed of around about 1900 calories, Fiona continued to maintain her weight. So at this point, we started to increase calories slowly to see if Fiona would gain weight. So at this point, we're trying to find her maintenance calories. So we've got her out the deficit and we're trying to find the maximum amount of calories that Fiona can maintain her weight on. And as of today, the 21st of September, Fiona is currently on 2,050 calories across the week every single day and maintaining her weight at 122 pounds. So she's two pounds up. I actually think she was 121.2 this morning. So she's around one to two pounds up from her lowest weighing, yet she's gone from around 1,400 calories on her low days up to 2,050 calories and still maintaining her weight. Now, I'm not saying that if you weigh 120 pounds that you're gonna be able to eat 2,000 calories a day, but the fact is, is that Fiona executed it absolutely perfectly. So we got her out of that deficit as soon as we could, and then we just started to slowly increase calories, and we will continue to slowly increase calories until we find a point where she starts to put on a little bit of weight, and then we may dial things back a bit. But the fact is, is that you wanna get out of that deficit as soon as possible, and then slowly increase calories to find out what your new maintenance calories are. So the two biggest mistakes that people make are one, is that they take the reverse diet too slowly. So make sure as soon as you finish, bump calories right back up again. And the second mistake that people make is that they think that their maintenance calories are gonna be the same as before the diet, which they very, very rarely are. So hopefully that has given you an insight in how I would implement a reverse diet and how I suggest people implement a reverse diet. And if anything, a bit of motivation from Fiona, who is now reaping the benefits of not only being in the best condition of her life, also eating a hell of a lot of calories for someone of her weight. So that's gonna be it for me. Please like the video if you like the video. More videos, more vlogs, more content coming soon. I just gotta get out, get moved. But if you like the video, please like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next video.